Okay, now we were running out of time because we started 15 minutes uh, uh, later. I will just uh, run through some stuff uh, that are not very critical to know, but but just give you a bit more confidence and understanding what's happening behind logical software, right? So when you run logical software, what it does? <clears throat> well, first of all, look at uh, the any file system. So how it looks like? It looks like uh, 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 we have MBR, master boot record, right? Uh, then we have boot sector coming from that MBR. Then boot sector shows us where a file table is located. And this is any file system, you know, like HFS, it's called cat catalog, right? For I uh, NTFS, it's called MFT table. It doesn't matter. Like uh, any uh, file system has the same, exactly the same structure. So MBR, boot sector, boot sector has a link to file table, okay? <coughs> Within file table, we have file records, we have file name, date created, other attributes. And most importantly, uh, each fragment that shows the file content, okay? This is what makes the dry, file the fragmented, obviously. Okay, so this is basically just, a, just a, uh, the file system structure, of any file system, any general purpose file system. <clears throat> so what logical software does, it just follow all these steps and validate whether uh, every single element in this link is corrupted or not. Okay, it checks whether MBR is okay, it checks whether boot sector is fine, it then file the file table, scan the file table and check every single file record and check if it's, if it's corrupted or not. And if, I, if it identifies there is some corruption there, then it will try to uh, restore, rebuild that file, file structure. Okay, by rebuilding what I mean is that it, it is using different kind of uh, algorithms to uh, find what was original data there, what was the original value that was uh, that uh, uh, gets corrupted, and uh, what are methods of restoring logical damage. First of all, it's using usage of redundant metadata. Okay, so for example, uh, uh, boot sector uh, is there's always a copy of boot sector some, somewhere. Okay, and this logical software knows where to look for the copy of this, bad uh, of this boot sector. So if I try to get boot sector, it's corrupted. Okay, I know, okay, there should be a copy there. It will search for the copy. If it finds the copy, good, I will use a copy instead of the original, okay? Uh, this is just an example of redundant metadata. If there is no redundant metadata, then it's basically trial and error. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, if cluster size is not is, is not known, okay? So cluster size in the boot sector was corrupted. So what, the, what data recovery software will do, it will just try all possible sizes of cluster, okay, for this file system, and try to use that and see if it gives you access to files, okay? So it will, it will try, I know, 4K sector size, 8K sector size, and stuff like that, okay? So it's basically just trying and see, can I get access if, if assuming it is, uh, it is this cluster size, okay? <clears throat> and then next thing is, is full scan of the drive. So what it does, if let's say boot sector is corrupted and we still cannot find file table, it will just scan the entire drive looking for file table, okay? And as soon as it finds that find table, it knows now, okay, the original boot sector is supposed to be, supposed to have these values, okay? And the last method, uh, it's called raw recovery. <clears throat> this uh, this uh, raw recovery method uh, is used to, re to uh, recover files when metadata is completely corrupted. So when not only boot sector, but file attributes are corrupted, the entire file table is corrupted, and uh, uh, we can still search the entire drive looking for particular data the client is looking for. For instance, the client is looking for pictures. Okay, so we, we will just scan the entire drive and see, does this sector look like a header of JPEG file? Okay, and okay, if it looks like header of JPEG file, we assume that this is the start of JPEG file, of picture file, okay? And then it will end whenever the next file starts. Well, obviously, the limitation of this uh, method is that if, if uh, uh, files are fragmented, then you will get only the first fragment, 
Okay, but that's still uh, an option, uh, and the, you, can act, you can actually uh, find uh, lots of pictures still. The smaller pictures can be, can be recovered in the raw recovery method, and many data recovery software implement that method. <clears throat> so as you can see, uh, again, there is no magic. There is nothing really magical happening behind this data recovery software. All it does it is scanning file system and trying to find, okay, what is corrupted and how can I, how can I restore the original uh, value? <clears throat> and then uh, there are two ways uh, what uh, <clears throat> could be done. So when uh, the file system just parts the file tree, it saves all fine files either to, to uh, the new folder on the same drive or to another drive. Well, obviously, uh, I would never recommend you saving data on the same drive, okay? If it's unstable, it's, it's exactly the same thing. First of all, you're killing the drive, and second of all, uh, if logical system, if, if file system is corrupted, you will be overwriting client's data, okay? Because operating system doesn't really know exactly where, where empty space is. Okay, <clears throat> so that's one way. Another way uh, is uh, that uh, some data recovery software also have a mode uh, to patching metadata. So you can run it, and when, for instance, again, we lose the file table, uh, we found the file table and rebuild the original boot sector, we'll just fix that boot sector that got corrupted. Okay, I would never uh, recommend patching. It's, it's just the worst case scenario. Uh, however, uh, most data recovery software, especially on Macs, uh, that's just a, just a normal way, uh, patching metadata, okay? So it has an option to actually save files somewhere, but by default, unfortunately, it's patching. So make sure when you run data recovery software, uh, you familiar, familiarize yourself with, with what actually uh, that recovery software does. Is it patching metadata or is it saving metadata? Or is it saving files, right? And why uh, you should never use patching uh, metadata? Well, first of all, obviously, heavy cost of drive stress, right? All the time when, you, when you're patching something and drive is unstable, you're killing it. You're just uh, still keeping, killing the drive. And then writing back to the same drive uh, it's actually damaging, okay? So it's, it's basically you're, you, you're getting through the data loss. <clears throat> and uh, firmware failure also can occur uh, with enough bad sector relocation because every time you write to unstable drive, if the drive figures out this is a bad area, it will hide it, remap it, and with a certain, as soon as it reaches a certain number of relocated bad sectors, firmware will just fail completely. The drive uh, will, will not be bootable. And then the last thing, repairing logical stretch, it doesn't always go as planned, right? So, so when, when you just execute that recovery software, and that recovery software, I assume, okay, there could, be, there could be a problem with boot sector, and I'm just writing it back and it fix it, and it may be wrong, okay? It's again, it could be trial and error. So it's not necessary, uh, it will not necessarily fix, uh, <clears throat> uh, fix uh, his drive. Okay, we, behind this schedule, I, I just uh, left uh, just maybe a few slides. I will fi final, finalize my presentation when we start next section, uh, okay? And uh, it's uh, in, in about 15 minutes, okay? So we just have, have a break for 15 minutes and we'll go on. <clears throat>